Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a little bit about using lists in Alice. Uh, but before I do that, one of you asked me about sizing things, so I'll show you how to do that. I have four objects in our world, the chicken, cow, flamingo, and frog. The frog is a little small and will be hard to see, so I'm going to blow him up. Uh, let's go to add object mode. And all we have to do is click on this um, resizer object. And if we click on that, by clicking on the object and moving the mouse up and down, we can adjust the object size. You can't see it, but I'm moving the uh, mouse uh, to the top or the, toward the bottom of the screen. So we have the frog a nice size now, and we'll leave this mode. Okay. The first thing we need to do is create a list variable, and we'll do this at the world level. So I'm clicking on the world object, go to properties, and create a new variable. Now you're aware that we can create number and boolean, that is true false variables. Let's create a variable called animals, and we'll make this an object variable, which means we can put an object in it. Uh, anything in our world. And in addition, let's, whoops, didn't see that. Um, we click on this check here to make it a list. And once we make a variable a list, we immediately enter into the list editor. Now let's go ahead and add some new items here. Uh, and uh, this adds the item and we can uh, fill the item by clicking here and we get the the typical menu that shows us various objects in the world. We'll start by adding the chicken. Now let's create a new item. Let's next add the cow. And let's just leave it at that. Let's close this list now. So if you look over here we see that we have the animals variable it, um, this little icon shows us that it holds objects and that it's a list because it shows these little, as if the icons were stacked on each other, that shows there's more than one. And we can see what's in the list here. We can alter the contents of lists under program control, but we'll go into that a little later. Right now, we can edit it right now. Uh, that is, we can edit it uh, before we run the program. So let's click on this. The, um, the collection editor comes back up and let's add a couple of items. In fact, let's just add one more item. We'll add the flamingo here and we'll leave the frog off the list and you'll see why in a moment. Now how can we use this list? Well, just as we have blocks to do statements in order or do them together, we have similar blocks or loops if you prefer to act on items in lists, either in order or all together. So let's take this for all in order tile and drop it in here. And when we do that, we get a menu asking us to choose a list for it. Uh, anytime we use these uh, blocks, they have to be associated with a list. Well, we could create a new one, but the already existing list and the only one is the animals list. So we'll put that in there. And when this block is created, uh, it has what we call a loop variable, which will give us each of the list items in turn. You can see that as contrasted with this icon here, which indicates a list, this one does not show the little stack, so that's just one uh, object. So if we draw this in here and attempt to drop it inside the loop, we uh, immediately get a menu because we have to do something with that object. And let's move each object forward one meter. Now this only works for standard uh, methods. If you add your own method, it's not going to show up on this menu and uh, you can't uh, use it in this fashion. This only works for standard uh, object methods. Okay, so um, each item in this list will move forward one meter, so let's run the program and watch that happen. 
Okay, let's watch that again. Each item in the list moved forward one meter in turn. And nothing happened to the frog because it's not on the list. Let's run it again. Okay, now let's use this other block which will uh, do everything in the list, will operate on everything in the list together. And just as before, we get a menu, we'll choose our list and uh, take the loop variable and drag it in here. And this time we'll choose move backward one meter. So what we're expecting is the animals to move forward one meter uh, each in order and then move backward all together and let's see if that's what we get. And once again the frog was not affected because it's not on the list. Let's play that again. Okay, that's your introduction to lists. I hope this was helpful and as always please contact me if you have any questions.